guys. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the story that you read for this week. Um, the story is called American History, and it's by uh, Judith Coffer Ortiz. And um, one of the literary terms that I asked you to kind of keep in mind as you were reading this was the um, the author's background. And um, I also wanted you to be thinking about historical context, what it was or what it is in history, in, in the environment that affects a writer's work and, and the choices that they make in that text. Um, this story, American History, takes place on the day that John F. Kennedy Jr. was assassinated. And if you ask anyone from that generation, anyone who was, um, you know, of an age that they could remember things, if you remember what you were doing when you heard that news, most of them can tell you. Um, I remember hearing my mom's story about when she heard it. I was not born yet, but, um, you know, it, kids to adults can always remember what they were doing at that particular time when they heard the news that the president had been assassinated. It made such an impact on them. And I think that that is important to remember when you're reading stories about this time period. Now that assassination took place in 1963. Um, and this was before we had the uh, media capabilities that we have today. You know, they had to break in, I would assume, on TV with the, the news bulletin that the president had been assassinated. And they had uh, radio at the time and, you know, and people would call each other. But, you know, now we have such immediate access to information with, um, with social media and with technology that we find things out, I mean, as they're happening. And um, I don't think they had that back then, so people found out at different times. For my generation, it was um, the Twin Tower attack and eventual collapse. Most people in my generation who were around to uh, on the day that that happened can remember that story very well. I, for one, remember that um, you know I was teaching. It was the very beginning of the day. And I remember Miss Crane was across the hall and she leaned her head out and yelled and this was back when it wasn't quite as um, important for all of us to have our doors closed. We just, we didn't think about intruders and, and things like that back then. But um, I remember Miss Crane yelling out that we needed to turn on our televisions and, and, um, and watch that something important was going on and so we all did. And I remember you know, everything that I was watching, I remember it today just like I remembered seeing it back then. I remembered what I was feeling. I remember when I first saw that the first tower had been hit, um, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, what a horrible accident. And then as I'm watching, the second tower gets hit and my heart dropped. You know, I mean, I, I just felt myself get a little nauseous um, thinking about how we're under attack. Um, and that was scary. And I'm worried about my son who was in um, elementary school at the time. My, my daughters weren't born yet, but I remember, you know, worrying about my son. And, and then all of a sudden the office at the school starts getting all these calls of people who were wanting to come get their their children because we weren't worried necessarily that we were under attack in Chesney or in Spartanburg or, or wherever um, but we just wanted to be near our, our people we wanted to be near our loved ones and to hold on to them and um, I don't know it was it was just a crazy thing to have experienced it was a crazy thing to have lived through um, for you guys in your generation, you are always going to remember this time, you know, this, the coronavirus when the world shut down. Um, you know, if you'd have asked me two and a half, three months ago, if um, this would ever happen, if they would ever, I'm sorry, hold on one second. Would, would you open the door? Daddy wants in. 
I'm so sorry. Um, but if you would have, if you would have told me that, you know, they were going to close Disney World and they were going to cancel um, sports seasons and things like that, I would have never, never guessed that that would happen. Um, but it did. You know, if you had told me that um, eventually we were going to be worried about bartering for toilet paper, <laughs> I would have laughed. Um, but apparently that is what happened, and I don't think any of us were expecting that. So that this is going to be your generation's thing that you always remember. And 10 years down the road, you guys are going to be reading short stories and novels about this time um, in, the, in the world and how that, how that effect affected us all. Um, and it's going to be the background, it's going to be the setting for tons of different pieces of literature. So historical context makes a difference. People who are reading about the assassination of Kennedy, um, you know, knowing what was going on at the time and knowing how that made the world feel, um, is going to play a huge part in the characters. Last week, we talked about character motivation and the reason why they do the things that they do and, and act the way they act and choose the things they choose. Um, and I think this historical context really plays into that. Because of historical context, um, people react differently. My grandmother, for instance, my grandmother lived through the Great Depression. Um, she was a child, but she can remember um, not having enough. Of, of anything and not knowing whether it was coming back. So now my grandmother has, you know, um, grown up and and always has that in the back of her head that what if we don't have enough? You know, what if something happens and, and we don't have what we need? And so my grandmother has become a hoarder. Um, you go into her house and she's just got tons and tons of stuff. Um, that's her historical context. That's a part of her story, you know, that living through the Great Depression and, and always having that in the back of your mind, that is a part of who she is, a part of what motivates her to make the decisions that she does. So keep these things in mind as you think about American history, the short story, and as you analyze these characters and why they act the way they do, why they say the things they say, and why other people treat them the way they do. Okay, so next week we'll talk about another story. Um, be checking your Google Classroom for extra assignments. Um, and I will see you soon, I hope. Well, I'll see you on here, <laughs> if nothing else. Guys, stay safe.